In this part, we will be talking about various taxonomic categories in detail. We have already seen these taxonomic categories and we also know that they are arranged in an hierarchy uh, manner or in a hierarchy that means either from the biggest group to the smallest group or from the smallest to the biggest so we'll write down all those categories in the hierarchy the top post or the biggest group is kingdom after kingdom come phylum or division phylum or division phylum is used in terms of or whenever we are talking of animals and division is used when we are talking of the plants. Then there are classes. In the class would be order. In orders would be families. In families would be genus. And the lowest or the smallest is the species. So these are the categories. And if we are arranging it in, a, in an ascending or descending order, we have to keep in mind Ascending means we will be going from the smallest group to the largest group and if we are going descending order then we will be coming from kingdom to the species. So this is how those categories are arranged in this hierarchy. We will be talking about all these categories and try to understand them by taking certain examples. So we will first start with the lowest that is the species. Now when we talk of species, the term species was given by John Ray. But the biological concept of species, biological concept was given by Ernest Mayer. Now what exactly this biological concept is? The biological concept says that the species includes a group of closely related organisms which can interbreed in nature and produce fertile offsprings. Now, there are many things which are hidden in this definition. The first word is closely related. Closely related. That means they have to have same ancestral origin or they arise from the same gene pool. So when we use the word closely related, we are actually talking of the same gene pool or the same ancestral origin. And when we say that they are able to interbreed in nature, that means reproduction is possible only between the members of the same species. They should be able to produce offsprings and these offsprings should be fertile. That means the offsprings also are able to reproduce so that the race or the species continues. Now, coming to some exceptions. There are two categories or two exceptions that we normally talk of. The first is mule. And these hybrids are found in case of donkey and horses. These are interspecies hybrids. So mule is a hybrid and it is obtained when reproduction takes place between a male donkey and a female horse. And this mule, this hybrid is sterile. That means in our definition when we say that the offspring should be fertile then here is an exception hybrid is produced but they are sterile and it is between the members of different species 
So if reproduction takes place between the members of the same species, that is, if male and female horse, they reproduce, they breed, the offsprings would be fertile. If donkey, male and female donkeys, they reproduce, the offsprings are going to be fertile. But if it is an interspecies uh, cross or breed, then the chances are that the offspring is going to be sterile. So mule is sterile. And the other one is known as hini. Hini is a hybrid of just the reverse of this. It is of male horse and female donkey. And both they are sterile and they are formed in natural breeding. So this is a natural process. That means in nature these animals can interbreed and they produce sterile offsprings. So here is something which is different from our definition. The second example is reproduction between again the members of two different species. One is called Taiwan and other is Liger. Taiwan is a hybrid which is produced where a tiger and a lioness they breed and a liger is produced when the breeding is between lion and tigress and these hybrids they are obtained only in captivity captivity only but the interesting part is that both are fertile. So, species only. That means when we are talking about a group of closely related organisms, they should be able to interbreed in nature and produce fertile offspring. But there are reproductions in some cases possible between the members of two species. And here a law of nature is broken. The law or the nature says that only the similar uh, species member should be able to breed. But if breeding takes place between two different species, then the offsprings are sterile so that they are not able to reproduce further and that mistake can be stopped at that place. But in captivity, we have obtained these hybrids which are fertile. But in nature, if you are talking about, because our definition includes in nature. So in nature, if interspecific breeding takes place, the hybrids or the offsprings are going to be sterile. We will write certain examples of the species. When we use the word species, we, when we were talking about binomial system of nomenclature, we said that every species or every organism would, would be given a two word name. The first would be the generic name, the second one would be the species name. So if we write a couple of examples here, say we write Panthera tigris. Then Panthera becomes the generic name and tigris becomes the species name. Let us write one more example here, that is Mangifera indica. This is the mango species that we are talking about. So this is the genus and this is the species. We can write one more example that is Homo sapiens or Homo sapiens. That is our scientific name. So Homo becomes the genus specific name or species name is sapiens or sapiens. So, what exactly is a species when we are talking about tigress? We are talking about all tigers. They are closely related. They are able to interbreed and they will produce fertile offsprings in nature. So, this is how we represent or we talk about the species. It is the smallest group, the most closely related group. So, species, this is the smallest and most closely related because later on when we move ahead in this hierarchy we will be talking about the higher groups so as we grow higher we would find that similar species would be kept in same genus 
similar genus would be kept in families. So as we go higher and higher in this category line, we would find that the closest are going to be here and the most diverse group would be at the top. So similarities go on decreasing as we go higher up in the hierarchy. Now in the next uh, part, we will take up genus and we will try to understand the other categories also.